Hi there, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. Busy day, busy day. We're going to create some seed pods, I hope. I hope everything goes well. Thank you to Daniel Gilan for your request. Daniel, here is a seed pod ripe from my rainbow forest, neo Phoenicia rainbow forest or Vanda rainbow forest. It's mislabeled, but we talked about that in email. It is harvested, it is in wax paper. And even though you like or prefer to work with green pods, this is what I have currently available. But I have 10 blooms to pollinate today. And what I'm going to do, with the exception of one, is just cross with self. I'm going to take you through the process of all 10 of them, but the first one I will explain and the other ones I will just show. This is my Cattleya intermedia, variety Aquini cerula. And she has been open for about six, seven days now and it is always ideal to take fresh blooms from a healthy orchid. You don't want to be transmitting any diseases. And I believe that all the orchids I will be pollinating today are healthy. Right, if there's any background noise once I get going, forgive me. I'm just going to keep going because this is not something you just stop at. First of all, a clean and sterilized toothpick. In my case, it's a skewer. Secondly, I will have to get rid of the anther cap there. I have to get into the pollen and then the stigmata surface underneath. So I can already see that the camera is not going to be the right angle for this. So let's get it moving. Let's have a look see. This is quite a large bloom, so it's not that, shouldn't be that complicated but I'm going down smaller sizes to give it a go to get you as many seed pods as possible. So we are going to go in, we're going to dip the toothpick into the stigmata substance there that is a little bit sticky. This will help me retain the pollen on the stick as opposed to it getting lost. Just to be doubly sure, I'm going to place a tissue underneath because if it falls then it falls on the tissue we're going to remove that anther cap she's a tough one there we go and then we have the pollen just want to get myself some of that sticky, sticky substance. And remove the anther cap. There we go. There's the pollen. That's what we want right here. All right, let me get into the stigmata surface there and get some of the sticky. So it helps me to hold on to the pollen itself and see that my toothpick is now a little bit wetter. There we go. I'm hoping that they've stuck. Now, the next thing to watch out for is to see if this was successful. The bloom will collapse. And then we should hopefully see the ovaries back here fill up. I didn't talk much because it's very difficult to do it even, well, for me, even just normal sight, but trying to do it via a camera is even more difficult. So the thing about pollinating is you will forfeit the bloom very, very quickly. 
but you can see in whoops you can see in there that the pollen is fixed in the stigmata surface so now we just keep our fingers crossed that this one has taken and then we'll go on to the next one so that's nine more to go Let's go down a size. This is where it gets a little bit more fiddly and more tricky. In this case, when it comes to this Epicatlia Kyoguchi Happy Field, there's many blooms. My intention is to pollinate the lower one. If that's not successful, I'm going up another one, but not the one right at the end because I want it as close to the mother plant as possible so that no, there's less danger of damage to the seed pod as the months progress while it matures, if the pollination was successful. So the lower for me is the better. Now, I've got lots and lots of chances here, but if I am not successful, seeing as it's so tiny, I will just keep going up the next bloom that's available. And we'll take it from there and see how we go. Okay, I'm just going to do my maxima now. I don't, I don't want to talk in between each one, but I wanted to show you. I'm going to pick a bloom as well that is low on the cluster of the spike. But this one's perfect because it's turned upside down. So we're going to pollinate this one and it's going to be probably much easier to see on camera.
you go. That should do it. Sorry, I've got a stick between my... <laughs> uh, it's, it's in there. All right, let's see if that takes as well. My Maxima only just opened a few days ago. So also quite fresh blooms. Just need to put the tag on, but moving on to the next one. Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. Let's give it a go. This is going to be a little bit tougher to film. I'm going to give it a go. No harm in trying that. I'm going to pollinate my Colmenara Masai Red, but I want a center spike, again, to protect the seed pod if I am successful in the pollinating process. But this center spike is much more protected from being knocked or anything like that in the coming months of maturation than anything I have out here. I've already got pollen like sticking out like right here you can see there we go uh, there. that's already pollen sticking out but it's old in order to cross this one with itself I'm going to take this lower bloom on the most recent open spike that still has the pollen cap on it or the anchor cap let's try this one if I'm not successful with this one on camera then I will pollinate the next one up off camera because the angle is really, really awkward. I need my tissue paper. worked. We'll see on editing. So this is Vandachau Praia, which has been in bloom quite some time. And you can see that the anther cap is already quite brown. It doesn't mean that it's not going to work, but you want to use a fresher bloom. So this is quite a, let's say, it's a very stout and reduced spike. We're going to take the bloom of one of these spikes at the end and work with this one. We're going to cross with self and we're going to cross with Vanda Suavis, cross with Vanda Cristata into the pod parent and cross with Chao Praia. Anyway, let's do the cross with self first. You can see underneath there, I hope, all the ant eggs. So I'm surprised that this hasn't already pollinated itself because of the ant activity. They like that sticky stuff that's in there, which I'm going to use to capture the pollen onto my toothpick. It's gonna help and nudge it with the nail a little. I don't want it flicking around. There we go. Oh, beautifully presented. Nice, that's how I like it. In your face pollen, no need to dig for it. I want to be very careful.
Whoops. Okay, hang on a second. It's just on the lip there. If they haven't taken all the sticky stuff, then I might have a chance here of capturing it, but the stigmata surface is pretty dry. But we got it. We got it in there. So crossbow itself is done. Let's put a tag on that quickly because there's going to be quite a few cross crisscross going on. So we've got the self. Now what we're going to do is remove the pollen from the freshest bloom up here and take it over to leopard yawn. So I have two spikes fresh on leopard yawn, just opening. Perfect candidates. I hope that I can get the pollination from the child prior to go successful. And I'm, I'm using leopard yawn as the pod parent in this cross because child prior has been open for so long. I would prefer to have a fresh bloom so that I can cross pollinate and hopefully get the maximum success. So we're gonna use this bloom here as the pod parent and bring over the pollen parent of the child prior. Here's one, let's get her in there. Just underneath the still intact and the cap of the leopard yawn. Let's get it in there, I'm gonna get the other one as well. Let's get it in there. Now normally there is no need to be putting it all in the same bloom, you can go with each pollen sac, pollen a, you can go into different blooms. I just prefer to do it this way to guarantee some form of successful pollination. Let's get that tag. So that's Suavis, crossed with Cristata and Chao Praia. Go, that's fine. I should feel pretty good about this cross pollinating it with self because I've already done it. The orchid room has a seed pod already on the go. But complacency is the enemy of the orchid grower. There we go, that came out nicely. Perfect. Don't ever want to get complacent in the orchid hobby. They will catch you out. Be nice to be getting these seed pods to grow on successfully. There we go. I think that should do the trick perfectly for this one. Oh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And that's the Suavis Cristata cross with self. I call it leopard yawn. It's not officially leopard yawn, clearly, but because it looks like a leopard yawning with all the spots and things, and boy, is that bloom sticky. Oh, and I have to wash my hands before I move on to the next one. So, if I'm doing all this correctly, at the end of all this, we should have nine skewers. 10 blooms pollinated, but nine skewers, because I used the same skewer for the chow prior self-pollination and into Suavis and Cristata. No need to change if you're using the same pollen. Come on. Okay, there we go, you're secure now. Let's get you looking pretty while you last. There we go. That's two. I have one more to go. I have here my Oncidium No ID, which I already pollinated this bloom, but my camera shut down. I did manage to film the second bloom that I pollinated over here. It might not be one on everybody's favorite wish list, but it is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. And as far as I'm concerned, if you are practicing or doing something and it's very difficult to come by seed pods, then this is good practice material I mean, one day somebody might say, oh yes, that is exactly the one that I want. And then you can send them a whole bunch of seedlings. But for the meantime, I did pollinate this bloom right here, but I only tagged one. 
and we'll see which one takes. And now I'm just going to show the clip of the pollination of the second bloom over here. Let's just take care of this second one. The anther cap popped off really, really easily. There we go. Look at how cute they're standing up. It's bolt upright. And that would be it. Let's just count. See that I did it correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Ten orchids pollinated more than one bloom on this in this case as well as on the Kiyoguchi Happy Field, but that is for purposes of practice, practice, practice. And we'll just put the tag here and say thank you very, very much, Danielle, for your request, your interest in my collection. I hope that everything is going to be successful and then I can eventually one by one send you seed pods. Let me know if you are interested in the little Neo or Vanda Rainbow Forest seed pod. I hope that everybody else who was watching this found it interesting. Fingers crossed this is going to be exciting to see how successful we are. Have a wonderful day everybody. Really appreciate you watching this process. Take care and stay safe. Bye!